Okay, um, as you can see, that's the speedo broken down, but this is quite, it's a lot of corrosion on it. Some people unscrew this and get it uh, re -zinked. I'm not going to do. <clears throat> All I'm going to do is take this tumbler out here because I want to zero the clocks. Um, so it's just a case of bend this out of the way slightly. Not an issue. I get a pair of side cutters. I hook it into there. I put it under that tab. I don't know if you can see that. And I just twist it in that motion. And it just bends it up to release it. There's probably a more technical way of doing it, but that's how I do it. I'm an idiot, what can I say? On this side, we've got another little tang, which you can see just bent over there. You see that? There. So we're gonna peel that to one side. Uh, we need a pair of long nose pliers. And all I'm gonna do is just move that to one side like that and that should allow this tumbler to come out but it probably won't but we'll see no. you've got to be so delicate with that because obviously you want to bend it back down again when you want to put it back in. So we've freed it off and hopefully, there we go. That's out, we can now zero that, which I'm sure you can figure out how to do it. This, however, inside here, I'm gonna put a little brush on it, brush it all up, and then I'm gonna get some duck oil and I'm going to paint the duck oil on here, which will arrest all this corrosion. As you can see, it's just dust. Because the last thing we want is the dust flying around when um, we're rebuilding the clocks. Because they've got to go upside down to have the crimp put back on. And if we haven't arrested all this, uh, it's going to get messy. So... We'll come back to you in a little bit. Right, I um, I pulled this tumbler out and I said, you can figure out how you do it. But I'll show you how to do it, because uh, it is fiddly. Just pull the little green drive off, put that to one side. Uh, this is showing 16,473 miles. So I've, I want to zero it. Um, so we rotate, well actually before we start, we've got these clips, um, I don't know if you can see them, yeah you can there, on one side and on the other, um, hold, well, hold the first one and spin the rest because you're going for the nine, so what we're going to do is 99,999.9. So when we get that one round, 7, 8, and you're just holding that little black clip, 9. Okay, so that's on the 9. So we rotate the next one, grabbing hold of the next clip, oh, sorry, see, I got that wrong. It's only on eight. That's been a little fucker. Okay, now it's not, that's on nine. So we now rotate. That's better. 
we're holding the second clip so we're rotating the hundreds effectively so you can see that going up I hope we're going for the nine I'm sure you can take it apart but again this is the easy way okay so we're on the nine so if we spin that back to now get hold of the third clip we'll just spin that round again so we can get the nine I could say fiddly as hell. There we go. So we're now holding three. And the numbers want to be in the center of those three. So actually when it comes up to the eight, which it's coming up now, I'll grab the fourth tumbler and hold it and turn the end two now we've got the nine nine so we're just going to spin this now get that going when that comes up to the eight we'll grab it again grabbing the fourth one now Rotating the fifth, there's your nine. So we'll grab all five tumblers now between thumb and forefinger. Spin this one, wait for it to go around to the nine. Like it has. Now what we're looking for is... When we get the bit that I've not got, let me just go and grab it. What we're going to do is These pegs on the top, these little clips, all have to be in a row. So as we put this into here, which is harder to do it so you can see, sorry, put that on the end. Don't forget that. We'll get it all round to a nine. Hold it like that. And slide that back into place. And it ain't gonna go. Now, these little clips, very important that they locate flat on that, let me see, on that bar. So a bit of manipulation, and you'll see exactly what I mean when you put them back on. Those are all sitting down. If they're not all sitting down flat, the numbers will not line up. Okay. And then it's just a case of crimping that back down to hold it in place. And then move this one across. To hold that in place. And just crimp it down. 
and that's lovely and now as soon as you put a drive onto that because all these are flat the, they grab like that so because they're all flat they're all in a line so all the numbers will be in a line when um, when we rotate this in fact shall we do it why not put that in can you see that As you can probably see, everything's moving nicely. Jobs are good. One. So we've now zeroed, bend that back, zero the clocks. Prove everything's working. Um, so we can put the faces back on. Okay. Um, what I do is I put new face overlays on. Um, because on the rev counter, move that. On the rev counter, as you can see, the red lines go orange and they want to be bright, bright red. So I put new overlays on, which look perfect. They've all faded a bit. Um, so what I do, this is the one for the speedo. So I carefully peel this off, turn it over or peel the backing back and I cut this piece out to so you can see the two screw holes and the drop the speedo needle hole and what that means is you can line it up perfectly do it against something white like I've got here and just hold it on also you've only got that small contact area so again it just makes it easy and it really is easy That's it. Push that down. Let me just check that's right. Yes, it is. So push that down there. We've now got a contact area. It isn't going to slip. And we know it's square. Peel that back. I use a little scalpel to help. Again, it's quite hard doing it, so you can see. Peel that back. All the way. Slide that out and then tear that off. Then just push it down. This is quite critical so you don't get any air bubbles. But if you do, we can deal with them. Because you always do get air bubbles incidentally i've wiped the faces uh, i use something called buff sole which is from my old tire days um which is a, a degreaser so you could use acetone cellulose thinners anything like that just takes any crap off there and make sure it's really clean so I'll just do the same with this peel it back Get it away, put it down on something flat and start just letting it down. See, I can feel something there. So I'll just pull it up. 
can see what that is. A little bit of muck there. Microscopic. Back down again. Now with these overlays, because they're plastic and flexible, where this recess is for the uh, trip and for the mileage, if you get a clean rag, press it down, the overlay moulds to the chamfers. So it's absolutely beautiful. Look at that. And any bubbles, you've got to check on different angles. There's a little bubble there. Press round, making sure that the edges don't have any. It's so crucial you don't have any dirt there. Once it's on, I just flash it over with a heat gun and that activates the... the adhesive. And then just press it down once more. And that's how you do it. And it's the same procedure for the rev counter. Okay, putting the needles back on. Um, I've just tipped the needles in this fluorescent orange paint. I just squirt it into the lid and then put both of the needles together so that the orange is the same length and uh, tip the needles again. When you're putting the needles on, let's get it so you can see it. Put the needle into place loosely there you go then just move it round gently but remember when you put the needles on you're not looking square down on it you'll be looking at it on the bike which is at a slight angle so a lot of people put them square on when it's square on if you can see there if you move it, it's not square. <clears throat> so tilt it at, at the angle that it's going to be on the bike. And then you can get it right. Then what I do is I just use a handle of a screwdriver and tap it. Make sure it's still right again. And then tap it again. So when it's at the angle that it is on the bike... It's absolutely banging line. So that's those two done. You can see the pair of them without me scratching them. Let me hold it that way. So all we've got to do now is um, clean the clocks. The I've retipped the um water temperature gauge that's pretty straightforward so all we need to do now is split all these down the little rubber gasket outer cup inner cup and the glass same for all of these just pull the rubber gasket off 
And what this does, this actually sandwiches between the inner cup and outer cup. So, if you can find my little screwdriver, you can just get in between the two and twist. So they all come apart nicely. I'll just be cleaning this with household pledge, household polish, the stuff you clean your furniture with. Um, so get the glass out, press down. If it's feeling a bit tough, press it gently with a screwdriver, because obviously if the glass breaks, it's going to go on your fingers. And then that just comes out. This has got a dent on it. So I'll just put a bar down there and hit it and that'll come straight. Um, then we need the Speedo one, same process. He says, but he can't get hold of that thing. This was a speedo that, uh, for, for some reason, had a load of corrosion in it. Whereas the rev counter was absolutely clean. So just go around it. God, blimey. Well, I'll have to do that one carefully. Uh, what's going to happen now is... These inner cups on the Speedo and Rev Counter will just get, I use four diamond white, just to spray the edge. Don't I don't touch the inside, it's good enough. Um, so that'll just get diamond white. The cups themselves, once we've got them back into shape, like that dent there, bar down it, tap it with a, a flat hammer, uh, just to get it back round again. They'll get primed, flatted, primed again if needed. Then they'll get two coats of gloss black. Uh, in between each of those coats, obviously flatted again. And then they'll get another coat of satin black. The gloss black makes the satin black look great for some reason. I don't know why. Um... So that's what's happening with those. To get the glass off the rubber, get yourself a new Stanley blade. I'll do this one because it's the most fiddly. And hold it flat and just run it round. And you'll hear it peeling away. Can you hear that? It's like they've taken root. But obviously be careful not to uh, cut the rubber gasket, but hold it flat. Make sure it's flat to the glass. When you've got most of it done, start peeling it away with your fingers. Peel it, peel it, peel it. Same on the other side. Make sure it's all loose. And then pull it off and you should have a perfectly intact ring. On this, you'll find that they're covered in rust. So again, get your blade and just scratch it and then give it a really, really good cleaning um, sometimes I use one of these scouring pads that you use on your dishes with some cellulose thinners on and it just gets it all off. It's nice. As for the glass, some of these glasses are domed. These aren't. Um, but again, a new Stanley blade and just go around the outside and peel off all the rubber and you'll see this white stuff I'm not sure what it is it's like a film that's on the glass but once you've got all that off just 
do both sides. But if you're using the flat of the blade across it all, you're not going to put scratches onto it. And then just keep flicking it over and bit by bit you'll you'll notice it all just disappears. Once you've got all that off, see that white stuff? It's like a resin. Once you've got all that off, it'll go pretty see-through, even at the edges, like that. I mean, they are glass, or some sort of glass. Um, Sol Vortisol, Brasso, and just keep holding it up to the light to make sure you've got all the marks off it. And then they're ready to go back on. Let's do this one. Again, press into the glass, but not going too far into the rubber so you cut through it. These are really on, Jesus. Been on for 40 odd years, aren't they? There we go, other side. Holding it flat. Then just peel it off with your thumbs. If you get a sticky patch like that, go under it again. Because you don't want to rip that. Okay. Getting that. A bit tough there. Just better to take your time with it. There we go. It's all off. A little bit sticky there. Rather than rip it, just cut it. And that's it. Again, that's a flat glass. So just flatter the Stanley knife blade and don't forget to turn it over because you might be trying to scratch something that's on the other side. Flick it over. Press it down and scratch it off. There you go. But if you do crack it, or it's got deep scratches in it that you want to get rid of, go to your local glass man, and it's 4mm glass. That's going to cut you a couple of discs out. They'll probably charge you 8 quid, something like that, so it's nothing. Even if it's a tenner. Um, but that's, that's that one done. Just wants a good polishing now to get all the crud off the edges. 
Um, so we'll get the rest of it painted. I'll pull this sticky one apart. Um, and then I'll come back to you when we put them back together. 